in the fluid realms of thought whose waters so many philosophers, mystics, and psychologists have navigated lies the enigma of Wilhelm Reich, a man whose pursuit of the unseen forces of life led him to the conception of unusual ideas. Wilhelm Reich was a loyal student and follower of the famous psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, but sailed beyond the conventional ideas of psychoanalysis into the turbulence of what he called organ energy. This energy was a ubiquitous life force, reminiscent of the ancient concepts of prana, or chi. In his own time, Reich called organ energy the primordial cosmic energy, and said that it was universally present and can be demonstrated visually, thermically, electroscopically, and by means of Geiger-Müller counters. The crux of his theory was a belief in a tangible, measurable force that underpins life itself. Reich first met Sigmund Freud in 1919 and soon became a student and colleague of Freud. Starting his career as a psychoanalyst in Vienna, Reich soon joined Freud's inner circle and was deeply influenced by Freud's theories, particularly those related to the libido and sexuality. In one of his books, Reich describes meeting Freud. Both men were studying sexuality in medical school and Reich approached Freud. Reich's description of Freud in these encounters is very specific. Freud, says Reich, was different. Whereas the others played some kind of a role, he did not put on any airs. To me, he spoke as a completely ordinary person. He had bright, intelligent eyes, which did not seek to penetrate another person's eyes, but simply to look at the world in an honest and truthful way. I had been apprehensive in going to him, but I went away cheerful and happy. From that day on, I spent 14 years in intensive work in psychoanalysis. It became evident that theoretical and ideological differences between the two men would emerge, and these led Reich to eventually part ways with Freud. Their differences marked a significant point in Reich's career. He moved further away from traditional psychoanalytic circles and into his unique blend of psychoanalysis, biology, and physics all of which confused Freud. In the end, says Reich, I was severely disappointed in Freud. Fortunately, the disappointment did not lead to hatred and rejection. I am happy to have been his student for such a long time without having criticized him prematurely and with complete devotion to his cause. Soon Reich developed his own theories and one of these was the concept of organ energy, which the scientific and academic world viewed with skepticism. Many of his ideas were dismissed as unscientific, and Reich became marginalized within the mainstream scientific community. Despite this, however, Reich and his theories found resonance among artists, writers, and those exploring the fringes of conventional thought. There are echoes of Reich's ideas about organ energy in the mystical philosophies of ancient civilizations. The Greeks spoke of pneuma, the breath of life, and the Chinese spoke of qi, the vital force that flows through all things. These forces, like Reich's organ energy, spoke to a deeper understanding of the universe and an interconnectedness that transcends mere physical existence. In the scrolls of alchemists, there are records of a quest that lasted for centuries. alchemists recognized the world as being composed of four fundamental elements earth air water and fire but additionally alchemists believed in a fifth element more fundamental than the other four 
and from which we derive the word quintessential, the fifth essential element. This quintessence or fifth element was said to be a pure form of matter that embodies life itself, and it bears a strong resemblance to Reich's organ. The old alchemical texts were shrouded in symbolism and secrecy, and often ventured beyond the material to the spiritual, seeking a unifying principle that binds the cosmos together. Similarly, Gnostic texts, with their emphasis on inner spiritual knowledge and the divine spark within, provide a spiritual ancestor to Reich's search for a universal life energy. As time marched into the Middle Ages, these ancient and Gnostic ideas found new expression in the works of medieval alchemists and mystics like Paracelsus and Hildegard von Bingen, who explored the convergence of the spiritual and physical worlds. The same theme that defines Reich's concept of organ energy. Their texts and teachings, though veiled in allegory and metaphor, continued the pursuit of an essential life-giving force. And it is from this foundational theory that his cloud buster emerges. The cloud buster, as envisioned by Reich, was a device designed to manipulate organ energy in the atmosphere in order to induce rain. The machine was a physical manifestation of his theoretical work, a bridge between the esoteric realm of organ and tangible meteorological phenomena. The machine itself consisted of a set of hollow tubes, which were connected to cables that led into water, which he believed would absorb organ energy. Reich's method of operation for the Cloudbuster was rooted in his understanding of organ energy's properties and behavior. He claimed that droughts and other weather irregularities were the result of stagnant or blocked organ energy in the atmosphere. By pointing the tubes toward specific areas of the sky and grounding them in water, Reich believed the Cloudbuster could unblock this energy, allowing it to flow freely and thereby catalyzing the formation of clouds and precipitation. Organ energy, Reich explained, charges the atmosphere and gives it the potential to form clouds and precipitate rain. For Reich, the Cloudbuster was an attempt to apply esoteric theories to practical problems blending the world of psychoanalytic theory with the down-to-earth matters of meteorology. But the Cloudbuster also intrigued several unusual persons not afraid of controversy over a device such as this. One such person was Trevor James Constable, who expanded on Reich's work with the Cloudbuster. Constable's own application of the Cloudbuster was innovative and unconventional, blending Reich's own theories with his own unique ideas. Constable was particularly interested in Reich's assertion that this energy could be harnessed to affect weather patterns. Constable's fascination with this idea led him to experiment with the Cloudbuster in various ways, going beyond Reich's original scope. He made significant modifications to the original Cloudbuster design. But then he went further than this. Constable also believed that his version of the Cloudbuster could disperse clouds and combat what he viewed as atmospheric pollutants. Constable conducted numerous experiments, particularly in the desert regions of the southwestern United States, claiming significant success in inducing rain.
constable derived great inspiration from Rudolf Steiner, whom he called one of mankind's greatest teachers. Steiner had written about the earth as having been covered with a sort of ether, and Constable himself had called the ether a moving physical presence. Vast rivers of this force, said Constable, move across the face of the earth according to latitude, season, and other factors. In addition, the earth more or less breathes this force in and out in a mighty diurnal circle. Successful weather engineering harnesses all of this movement to the objective desired. Constable also demonstrated the use of his cloudbusters on ships at sea. The SS Maui is a large Matson container ship with 30,000 horsepower and a speed of 22 knots. These weather guns on her flying bridge are essentially juxtaposed geometric forms of various kinds, mainly cylinders and cones. These are so designed that they will interact with the ether and through this interaction produce changes in the air itself. Some of them are now no larger than the human hand. In this experiment, we arrange this device, the Black Widow, directly ahead of the vessel, and using vessel velocity, we begin to inject a reverse flow into an etheric flow, that is a primary flow, coming out of the west. The vessel is presently heading due west. If you'll watch carefully in this time-lapse tape, you will see that as the primary force is dammed up to the west of us, the atmosphere begins to bunch up as this accretion of force translates itself into the atmosphere itself. The damming of this massive regional flow of primary force shows itself as a steadily densening dark line across the horizon. The atmosphere is now responding to the local damming of the etheric force. It is being backed up. It is something like an undertow at the beach. We are doing this with the Maui and her primary energy translator. Denser and denser it gets. The ether has properties of elasticity and it will only tolerate so much compression before it overwhelms the dam as it just did. So let us watch the accretion process again. The flow from the vessel goes back into the westerly flow, head on, dams it up. The atmosphere responds by concentrating, as you see here. Everything in primary energy weather engineering depends upon the normal concepts of potential being reversed. Etheric energy flows from low potential to high. Therefore, your entire thinking must be changed if you are to do this work or to understand it fully. In 1979, aboard the SS Maui, the ship was seen in this radar image to be heading toward cloudless skies. But as the ship progresses, precipitation begins to build in front of the ship. And toward the rear, the clouds dissipate. The cloudbuster was able to generate rain just in front of the ship itself as it traveled forward. This idea harked back to the older, pre-modern concept of the ether, a substance once thought to permeate the universe. Constable postulated that this etheric energy could be manipulated to create or disperse cloud formations, and described this energy as well as his cloudbuster machine in a book devoted to photographs of UFOs taken by him.
Constable built several versions of the Cloudbuster and was able to confirm the power of these in public demonstrations as well as in drought-stricken areas of the world, much to the surprise of skeptics present in these events. Numerous reports and newspaper articles immediately confirmed the appearance of rain and the satisfaction of authorities who had hired him to bring water to specific areas in need of it. In one case in Malaysia, a drought was so severe that it dried up the lake leading to a large dam. Local residents believed that an evil force was preventing water from reaching the area since it had been raining steadily nearby. Hired to help in this crisis, Constable sold his services to the local government on a contingency basis. No rain, no payment. He then installed the Cloudbuster, and in less than one month, sufficient rain came down as to fill the entire dam, which was 28 meters in depth. This work was repeated in Santa Barbara, Maine, and other parts of the United States. It was fortunate that Constable extended the cloudbuster work of Wilhelm Reich, who had become the subject of attacks in the United States that were secretly engineered by the Soviets. In the 1930s, Reich had published a landmark book, The Mass Psychology of Fascism. When it appeared in English translation, the communists targeted him for attack. By now, the only source of complaints against Reich had come from an article in the New Republic, a magazine that had come to be run by Michael Whitney Strait, an American who later confessed to working as a spy for the Soviet Union. The New Republic article was full of inaccurate and provocative attacks, and soon after, Reich became the subject of legal action by the US government, which ordered him to stop the sale of his devices his research and related materials. He was eventually found guilty of defying this order and was given a two-year prison sentence. Deeply disappointed at the tragic turn of his life, Reich passed away in prison from heart failure one year after his incarceration. It is tragic that Constable's success in proving Reich's theory as a real rainmaker was not helpful to Reich himself earlier on, and so it is both tragic and fortunate that Constable was later able to show the world that Reich's own theories about organ energy connecting the power of the earth and sky were correct. Constable's success in proving Reich's theory as a real rainmaker was not helpful to Reich earlier on. His lasting cultural impact has been the modern acceptance of an unseen life energy, illustrating how ideas that challenge the status quo can inspire discussion among various disciplines. Reich was more than a modern thinker. He was a real rainmaker, accomplishing what alchemists, Gnostics, and ancient Greeks had always wanted to do.